Welcome to the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast with global sales trainer and professional speaker, Lois Kofi. Each week, it is her goal to share inspiration and education for you to be, do, have the best health and wealth and wisdom for your life. Well, all right, all right, all right, and happy Friday, everyone. It's Coach Lois. I am your podcast host of the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast community that comes to you live almost every Friday. There's a few exceptions there. So if you're tuning in live, please go ahead. You know the drill. Um, Comment below and let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, Hashtag live if you're on the live. Hashtag replay if you're on the replay. Now I'm super excited about this month. I just want to tee up because we have a very, 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 very special topic. I did this last year for the first time going to keep it an annual thing. It's really timely because of this whole pandemic world that we're living in. Uh, But September is suicide prevention. And I also like to throw in their mental health month. And so um, all of my guests have some kind of impact, some kind of message, some kind of mission, and even personal stories of attempts of suicide. And so you guys are going to want to hit the share button and share this with your community. And then of course, all the recordings, all of the information, and also how to seek help if you have someone who's struggling in your life um, can be found at suicide-prevention.now.site. I'll also drop that in the show notes. I'll also, you know, share that with you guys. Got Sherry Hughes Smith turning in from Northern California. So again, if you're just tuning in guys, you know the drill, comment below and hit the share button um, because we have a very powerful message today. I'm super excited to have a repeat offender guest like Dr. Mel. I know you were here last fall. Um, We even had some technology issues. So I'm so glad that you are back. My friend from Minnesota, uh, she's a network spinal practitioner, a body mind trauma advocate, and also an amateur bodybuilder. So I'm so excited to have you here today. I'd love for you to share a little bit about your story and why you do what you do as this body mind trauma advocate. Mm, thank you, Lois. I'm so happy to be back. Um, despite the technology last year, here we are <laughs> making Yay. it happen. And thank you, those of you who are joining in live. I'm super excited to be here. And uh, mental health is near and dear to my heart. You know, as Lois said, I specialize in body mind work, um, somatic work, trauma, helping people really reclaim their life and overcome trauma. And one thing I always let people know is I did not grow up with this type of work. I did not grow up with this type of understanding. Um, I am a child of divorce. I'm a child of sexual trauma. And so I did not understand a lot of the things we're going to be talking about. And I'm sure, Lois, you share Mm. with your community of how to reclaim your body, mind, and life. So I grew up always as an athlete since the age of five. And my mantra growing up was you know what, if you're in pain, deal with it, Um, kind of suck it up attitude, (laughs) wipe down the tears and just keep playing. If you have symptoms, you just chug some NyQuil and shove it down, right? Mm. So it was a lot of, we didn't go to the doctor a lot, but we also didn't really talk about things. My mom was kind of like, rub some dirt in it and get up and play, right? Mm. And so it wasn't until I was older that I realized how much I had really suppressed And it wasn't until I experienced an injury playing rugby. So I played soccer, I played softball. You know, I was the crazy athlete, um, got straight A's, like the super hardcore achiever, which is, as you know, some trauma in itself. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, I've had family members deal with mental health stuff too. And so it wasn't until I experienced my own injury that someone told me to go to a chiropractor. And Mm -hmm. yeah, people understand chiropractic, back and neck pain, But once I got into the world of healing and understanding the root of so many things comes from nervous system trauma and how our nervous system dealt with stuff growing up, I realized, wow, I have a lot more layers to unpack. And so when I started getting adjusted and healing from this physical rugby injury, all of a sudden my emotional health started to change. I started losing weight just super easily. Um, I started Mm. releasing a lot of old baggage and stuff I didn't realize I was carrying around. It's kind of like when you, you have this awareness of, wait a second, that happened and your brain starts to come online. And all of a sudden you discover what you're really made of and who you really are. And Mm. maybe these layers you've been living into. 
Um, so it all started with really, really an injury, actually. And I'm very grateful for that injury now that I look back. And once I started getting the work done, I decided that's what I wanted to do for my career and really help people understand the body-mind connection, how trauma, yes, we can perceive it sometimes in our head, but it's really, it's in our body. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about people dealing with mental health, anxiety, suicide, we don't realize that there, there's a body component oftentimes and we skip over that. Um, so I've been passionate about it ever since. I opened up my own practice once I graduated. So I've been in practice now for almost five years and helping people daily, you know, not just deal with their physical pain, but mental, emotional pain and help them uncover those stories and come back home to their body, um, which mm. in my eyes is really our only home. So with all that, there's a lot of things I'm up to and creating, as you said, you know, bodybuilding has been a journey in itself, um, up to creating other businesses. I now mentor people and coach people. And it's just an unfolding journey of the self to help others find their, their selves too, and their true self. Ah, I love that because that's the purpose of this show is to help people not only be quote unquote successful, whatever that means to you, but really create or recreate your highest and best version of yourself. And obviously healthy and wealthy and wise health is first. I don't think just because Benjamin Franklin put it in the saying healthy, you know, you know early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. I think yep. you and I both are connected on that level. And I didn't know same thing. And I actually, someone commented, I'm going to share this suck it up buttercup. <laughs> Yeah, yes. that was that was and a lot of my coaches when I was little, they were men and they were just like, you know, no pain, no gain. The pride mm -hmm. lasts longer than the pain as a marathon or an Ironman triathlete. And I was just on that hamster wheel of being the good girl, seeking approval, always wanting to get straight A's also because of that, that, that trauma. And so I don't know even where to begin um, because there's there's so much here. But you and I were talking before the show, and maybe we can start with the fact that it's back to school. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a, a lot of stress. There's a uncertainty. I hear it every day. I have friends. Oh, my kids had to be taken out of school. They had. They didn't have. And thankfully, they didn't end up having COVID, but they had a cold, mm -hmm. so they were sniffling, sneezing. So now, you know, they're home, and now the mom has to figure out how to run her business and have her kids home. My my kids teachers um one of them he was able to go to school the other school uh the teachers had covid so they delayed the start of in person classes two weeks and we just moved and and mm -hmm. and you know so everybody's stress mm -hmm. in back to school time is higher and what have you been seeing in your practice and mm -hmm. how can people work through that yeah yes. i one, acknowledge all of the parents, all of the entrepreneurs, where if you have kids, give yourself so much grace. It's really interesting to see people's spines and nervous systems on the table now compared to when it's June and everyone's in summer mode, and especially in Minnesota. <laughs> and what I like to educate parents on, Lois, is when the brain and body is operating at a state of anxiety we lose touch with our prefrontal cortex. We're not thinking logically, we're not connected, we're not we're not mm -hmm. as empathic. And so that's when we can get into like the family arguments or with our spouses or partners or our teammates, um, team members where we just, we're a little bit more at each other's, th each other's throats. So one of the things I tell people is if you can create some level of predictability. And what I mean by that is that may mean walking your children through certain scenarios of how things may go. And I get this year, there's a lot more variability because every single school district is different. Some are requiring masks, some aren't, some are hybrid. And so the more that you can say, look, I hear you, I see you, first acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. Like acknowledgement is one of the most powerful tools in like <gasps> the body breathes, right? Mm -hmm. Like being seen, if, if we mm -hmm. could all just be seen, we could all take a big deep breath and come out of our like fighter amygdala brain, right? So one, acknowledge them. Like, I hear you. I see you. I know you're frustrated. Acknowledge the emotion. And then creating predictability for the brain allows the brain to at least when it walks into similar to, you know, as an athlete, if you have some level of knowing the course or knowing how the game scenarios may go, your ability to show up more confident changes, right? So I think that's a good analogy. If your kids can understand, hey, this is what the classroom may look like, draw it out on a whiteboard. 
this is our chalkboard back here. My husband and I don't have kids, but we we like to draw. Um, <laughs> so if you can draw it out, if you can talk it out, use visual processing, use auditory processing, talking it out. Sometimes it helps kids to even go there and, and say, hey, this is where I'm going to drop you off. Um, predictability for the brain brings ease. Stability for any system brings ease, right? doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's a nervous system, if it's a business system. Mm -hmm. Stability brings ease. Predictability brings ease. So when the mm -hmm. challenge arises, you've kind of seen it before. So that's something I have a blog on our website. Um, it's inspirelifechirocenter.com. If you parents want to read more about that, I give some ways that you can practice that. But really, anxiety is just the brain going into the future and the unknown and creating unknown scenarios. When mm. in reality, the only time we have is now. But anxiety is into the future. And I know it's mental health and suicide prevention. Depression is kind of getting stuck in the past. So the more we can create scenarios in the now that make you feel at mm. ease, the more that higher brain will come online. I love that. And do you... You, you were sharing that you've you've seen suicides happen just like this week. Yeah. You know, so um, it, mm -hmm. not that this is all about that topic per se, but how do you how do you be empathic and serve and support these people? How can we can be compassionate and acknowledge and then also take care of ourselves in that moment? Because it's so heavy, like everyone's impacted, whether you know you're an empath or not. I think there's all this energy going on, right? Mm -hmm. And how, how do we protect ourselves when all these other people are stressed out, freaking out, or, you know, obviously grieving, because there's a mm -hmm. lot of that going on. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were talking about earlier, Lois, you know, I've had a couple practice members this just this week. I know it's back to school week for a lot of people where, you know, teenage daughters, for example, um, caring for a man, his teenage daughter, their friends, um, one of the friends did commit suicide and he was just distraught, you know, mm -hmm. didn't know what to do. And I said, you know, the biggest thing you can do right now is just be with your daughters, mm -hmm. um, ask them if they want to talk. And I know you have kids too. I, I don't think they're teenagers yet, um, but it's so tough. It's such a, we don't understand it fully. And I think there's a lot of signs that we can start to pay attention to in kids um, early on. And so I think the biggest thing you can do is one, like be with your kids, but also make sure that you're giving yourself time to process, whether you are the parent or you are a coach, a provider, um, an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, or you're maybe a family friend. And like me, I'm an empath. I, I sometimes take things on and I, I have pretty good ways of clearing it. But honestly, this week, Lois, just to be fully transparent, because I know you're all about that. Mm -hmm. I all of a sudden I was driving home and I started crying. Mm. And I was like, where is this coming from? Mm. And rather than like letting the mind try to like make meaning out of it, I just let myself cry. And I realized just the heaviness that I was carrying and hearing people's stories. And if you're a provider or you're a coach, like and you hear people share this it's really important to have strategies to clear because what my mentors tell me is if you're carrying that around, you know, have empathy in the moment, but if you carry it into your daily life, your chances and your ability and capacity of showing up for them next week or a month later goes down. So the more you can take care of yourself, mm. the more you expand your capacity to be able to be in those scenarios and have a healthy boundary where you have empathy, but you don't take it on, mm. right? So one of my go-to strategies, as I was sharing with you, is literally like I'll pull up in my driveway, I'll turn off my car, I turn on my favorite song, I like Coldplay, I'm weird like that, <laughs> um, and I just, I just lay and I put my hands on my body and I breathe, and if mm -hmm. I cry, if I laugh, I just, I let my body process, right, mm -hmm. before I enter into my house with my husband. Awesome. Oh, and that's not easy because a lot of us especially like we talked before on my summit that you're going to be on is just like as as all that trauma we get in a fight or flight mode right mm -hmm. so it's so it was so foreign to me in the pandemic to have this slow down wait a minute i have more time on my hands shouldn't i be busy shouldn't i busy <laughs> myself right so don't you think like sometimes as humans because of that caveman brain or whatever you're you're the expert on this not me um <laughs> with that we go into that fight or flight and it's not easy to be conscious and say oh. to ourselves self 
I think you got to just be with this moment right now and release the tears instead of, like you said earlier, we were taught to stuff it down. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to that on how you coach your practice clients, your your clients on how do you become more aware? Because first, Mm -hmm. awareness is the first step, as cheesy as that sounds, right? To just be and and put pockets of time where you allow yourself to to cry or to feel or to whatever. Any tips on that? Absolutely. Um, One of the biggest things, Lois, like you said, is developing awareness. And I know that sounds simple, but you said it beautifully. We need to slow down to speed up. And what I mean (laughs) by speed up is actually become more whole and an embodied being, like getting there. I don't want to say faster, but oftentimes you and I, for example, we're probably conditioned to default into the fight mode where we would achieve out of stress Mm -hmm. because we were avoiding something. Mm -hmm. And so one of my mentors, Donnie Epstein, who's the founder of Network Spinal Care, talks about this strategy called AAA. And not to be mistaken with AA, but similar tenets of awareness. And so the more that you can slow down and be like, wow, I have this tightness in my chest. And in this moment, I'm Mm -hmm. driving to my kid's school. Hmm. Okay. Got it. And the more awareness you create, you actually create new neural pathways. And we as human beings, thankfully, have a prefrontal cortex and a higher brain where we have this ability to become conscious of our experience. And so the more you practice cognitive awareness, even, even right now, for example, like if we all, you all watching this, I'll tell my practice members, it doesn't matter if you're in a state of stress the best time to practice it is when you're in a state of ease and balance. So noticing where is my breath? Am I breathing high? Am I nervous that I'm on this podcast? Do I have tension here? Do I feel like, where do I feel at ease? And just notice. Mm. And the more you notice and create the first step of awareness, you create new neural pathways. And then when you're in states of stress, you've already created neural pathways of awareness where your body will more easily want to default into that pathway you've created. So like a sport and training, it takes practice. So I always recommend people, look, if you have a full schedule, for example, how can you schedule maybe in between client calls or work emails, how can you schedule maybe an hour over your lunch break where all you do is maybe sit and breathe for two minutes? That's all it takes. We're so used to jam packing our schedule. Like I use Google, for example, and it's like every single thing is colored sometimes. So how can you create more white space in your day Mm. where maybe all you're doing is is breathing? And Mm. I know one of the gifts I'll give away, um, it goes into this, like strategies to do it. I have a ton of YouTube videos on like different breathwork practices. But the first step in that AAA is awareness, acknowledgement, and then acceptance of like, all right, Mm. I'm stressed. And when you can create awareness, acknowledgement of something, that gives you power to then make a new pattern change. I love that. You're you're speaking to a book I'm reading. I, I think I might have told you about this book called Waking the Tiger. Have yes. you read it? Peter okay. Levine. That's yes, it's a great oh, book. So he talked about being slowing down on the and learning the felt sense. Feeling yes. being inside of your body is so so Ah, so needed in mm. this in this world. And we have actually have a great question from the audience here. So I'm going to bring this yeah. up if you can answer this. Um, how can I help my daughter? Severe trauma from her biological mother. Hard when she goes into her reptilian brain for her to know how to support her daughter. She freezes or sometimes flights to her room with a stop and slam. They don't end up fighting. Mm. But how mm. how can how can, you know, she help her? Was that Sherry or Sheree? Hopefully I'm saying Sherry. 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 Um, Really great question, Sherry. And the fact that you have an awareness of she's defaulting to freeze and flight is beautiful. Um, My free gift that I'll be giving you all goes into that in the masterclass of how to pendulate among the different default. They call it the five Fs. So with someone who is flighting, Oftentimes, what best serves them after you give them a little processing time is to move. So it might not, they may not want to talk about it, but going on a walk, for example. So not that you're going to necessarily say, hey, do you want to talk about it? Because when we're in flight or freeze, the last thing we want to do is sometimes verbalize it. 
Mm. We want to engage like the motor system first. So it might be like, hey, you want to go for a walk? And if if they are even hesitant about that, keep letting them know that you're there for them. But the oftentimes like kids in that state don't want to talk about it, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. But they may be better served through movement. So mm. if you know, Sherry, there's something that um, – she likes to move or do certain activities, helping her do that first will help her other parts of her brain re-engage where then naturally the conversation may come through. That was my strategy as a kid. Well, I would fight and then I would go run in my room, right? I hated when my parents would be like, do you want to talk about it? (laughs) But what would help me is I would go outside and maybe play some soccer and then I'd be okay because I was given that space. So it could just be the strategy for her to come out of that flight or freeze response. And I go into that in major detail in the masterclass I'll be gifting you all too. So really yeah, great I was just question. Gonna say, yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I will be dropping that releasing trauma masterclass. I also want to throw it out there that Dr. Mel and I had a very powerful interview in uh, our summit that's coming up Mm -hmm. in October. You can sign up for it now and actually get access to that content as well if you go to manifestandmonetize.com. And again, I'll be be dropping that in um, the the show notes. So Sherry did post this before you answered that. Um, So helping her practice when she is calm is great. I do that sometimes. This was a good reminder. Yeah. And I think just to speak to that too, for parents... Remember, where is your energetic state? Because even a kid, whether it's an adolescent or a teenager, they pick up on a lot. Okay, they haven't been on the planet as long as us adults have. And so what could you do? Right? I'm a believer of everything is inside out. What could you do, Sherry, to calm your body mind? And just notice what happens around you, right? Because mm. your nervous system creates an energetic field. And so when you're at ease, Perhaps that shifts the dynamic with with her. Well, and I was just going to say, it's really cool. This is, I was just throw this out there. I hope you don't mind. I'm saying this like um, Dr. Mel working with the somatic, the psychosomatic and all of the brain stuff. There's so much trauma in traps. So she's coming out here in California at the end of October. We're going to be doing a spiritual retreat together Mm -hmm. um, and, and working through a holistic mechanism to be able to help release that trauma because there's so much in our brain, right? That needs to be released. And it's not always easy to do through talk therapy and and all of the different things. So just wanted to mention that if anybody has any questions about that, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I I don't want to remind people if you're, if you're watching this, please hit the share button. Um, We want to get this message out there as much as possible because, and again, not to, not to belittle talk therapy or all these different things, but I, I know, and, and I, this is not a, a negative statement. I actually stopped working with a therapist because I felt like I kept talking about the same stuff over and over and over again. And what we focus on expands. And the more mm-hmm. I've gone within and done more of that, that body and the somatic work that you're talking about, oh my gosh, be the change you want to see in the world. Now, you know, my kids and I are getting along so much better because everyone's a mirror to us where we talked about this on the summit interview, where we have this heart center, this energetic, you know, vibration that goes out to the world. And so sometimes it's really just looking in the mirror, right. Mm. And healing ourself, not trying to save the world as moms. I'm just going to throw this out there and nurturers. We're like, how, how full can we make the backpack? How much more can I try to take on to heal um, the world and save the world? Right. When really, we got to start on ourselves, right? And releasing that trauma. The more I release, I notice my kids are showing up differently. Yes. Yes. 100% Lois. If uh, I'm going to see if there's another question here. (laughs) Okay, good. Sherry's just commenting. So if anybody else has any more questions, this is the time. As always, we'd like to keep the show to 30 minutes. It it is, we are willing to, to go over a little bit more on that today. Can you share maybe a little bit more about what else um, you're, they're going to learn inside of your releasing trauma mm-hmm. masterclass, mm-hmm. any other tips that, that they can look forward to being part of that? Yeah. So in the masterclass, I talk about how the body, mind, and the nervous system are impacted by trauma. And so with the, it's about 90 minutes 
and we first go into like what is trauma exactly because I think I'm very cautious of that word actually, Lois, and I think the a new word that we could potentially use is root experiences because I think sometimes oh. even the word trauma, and maybe you could use this in your future oh, content. I like that. But the word trauma implies – I think it, it can create a little bit of subconscious trauma, right? We hear trauma in our nervous system. Like every time I say it, I feel it in my body in some way. And so what we talk about is like what is trauma really in the nervous system? Because one person could go through one experience, another person could go through the same experience, and their nervous system is wired differently. Why is mm. that? Mm. So I like to call them root experiences that create patterns in our body. And then how does it impact our body, mind, and nervous system? What are different default patterns? So we all will fall into a series of different default patterns. And Sherry's kind of mentioned it, but there's actually five Fs. So people talk about fight or flight. There's mm -hmm. fight, there's flight, there's freeze, there's fawn, and there's fitting in. And a oh. lot of people aren't talking about, unless you're reading Peter Levine's work and Bessel van der Kolk, um, fawning and fitting in are, are more novel in the sense that we as human beings have a social nervous system, which is the newest part of the nervous system. Um, mammals don't deal with with social nervous system trauma because they have ways of releasing it where they don't really care if they have to growl or bleh, like make sound, right? Mm -hmm. We we do because we people please, we fawn, we want to fit in and camouflage. So we go into that and then we mm -hmm. talk about, okay, what do we do about it? When you know your default, mm -hmm. you can then apply the strategies I teach in getting out of it. And a lot of that is like knowing yourself and recognizing, oh, when I'm in a, when I'm in a social setting, I notice that I totally just want to fit in and I'm not who I truly am because I'm afraid that if I'm myself, I'll be isolated from the tribe, mm. right? And that's primitive because when we're in isolation, which a lot of us have experienced over the last year, when we are isolated, our life can be at stake because we're our genes from our ancestors haven't changed as much as we think. And mm -hmm. so if you were exiled from the tribe and from your community as a cave woman or caveman, your chances of survival went down. Yeah. And so you had to fit in. So we talk about that, ways to resolve it. And it's all at home strategies. So there's it's a lot of like working with your body, mind and recognition. And I actually bring people through um what I call neuropendulation and uh, times it's called a times exercise. And I do it in the class. You get to sit back and receive it. Oh, I love that. And and you hit the nail on the head. I actually had a people pleasing podcast back in July. <laughs> yep. So I can relate to that on so many levels. I, especially after becoming a mom, like I know mom, we're not talking about mom brain today, but even becoming a parent, let's, I, I don't want to leave out the the dudes in this conversation. You, 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 you get so much responsibility because now you're, you're literally, your heart is outside your body in this other being. <laughs> right. And then I think I was vulnerable to, I just wanted to, you know, again, be the good girl. So I fell into people pleasing, which then opened up a whole other can of worms. So I don't know if you want to say anything really quickly about um, how to, how to, I, we already talked about it. I think your answer would be, well, slow down and really mm -hmm. ask yourself, does this, this thing that I might say yes to fit my vision or not? Cause then you overcommit and then it's like yes. a snowball effect. Then you're even more overwhelmed. You might start drinking too much, which is what I did last year. Or you might, you might start smoking, or you might start turning to food. You might yeah. start having, you know, all sorts of challenges in your marriage. I mean, that happened to me last year too. So, yeah. any quick tips on just that little element? I always go back to the body. Um, that's you know my wheelhouse, my jam. But I notice if I'm overcommitting or filling my schedule, or maybe I'm saying something in a social gathering, I actually notice a constriction in my throat. And again, this takes practice to become aware of like, what is your body telling you? Is it truth? Or is it a default false pattern? Mm -hmm. I notice that I get constricted here. Um, and that's right where our social nervous system is. So I like to look at, am I just saying yes? The question I ask is, am I just saying yes to this person? Because right now I'm seeking external validation Mm. Or is it something that I feel 
inspired and I actually feel it more from like my heart and my body. So a lot mm-hmm. of what I teach Lois and when people ask me these questions on podcasts and things, I'm like, what is your body telling you? Because mm-hmm. you cannot deny physiology. Our mind will try to override. Mm-hmm. And I would just encourage people to really pay attention when your schedule is full or you're overbooking yourself. What's your intention behind it? Is it because you're seeking, like I said, external validation from someone who you don't really care about? Mm. Or is it actually aligned with the deep truth inside of you? And again, this I am not an expert at this, but I've been doing it for a while. And let me tell you, when you can start to tune in to those subtleties, you can live a way more aligned, empowered life and manifest, which I know we, in the summit, manifest a lot more with a lot more ease and a lot more fun and a lot more grace. That's a great segue. Um, and I know we're going a little bit over time and I know you said mm-hmm. that's okay. Um, I want to talk about the summit, but the mm-hmm. the reason it's called Manifest and Monetize, guys, and I also, I've been putting Dr. Mel's masterclass. Um, I already dropped it in the in the Facebook group at drmelkrug.com forward slash masterclass hyphen free. Again, that'll be in the show notes. So please sign up for her masterclass. But also Manifest and Monetize was, was born in my brain because Last year, Dr. Mel, I started releasing trauma because I started slowing down. And it actually, uh, I had two friends commit suicide last year. So it was Mm. like, I I woke up, right? I realized like, you know, life is short. You know, why am I playing around with people pleasing and drinking too much and over committing and working seven days a week? This isn't me. Yeah. Yeah. This is some external version that was created because of trauma and, and the root experiences and the things that I, I believe that weren't true. They weren't my truth, like you just said. And so then I started manifesting five figures a month and multiple five figures a month. And I'm like going, wait a minute. I've had these goals for like seven, 10 years. Why is this all of a sudden happening? I was a little pissed, to be honest. <laughs> so can you say why why we manifest and monetize. And it's not about the money. It's, it's really about whatever it is for you, whatever your definition of wealth is, is, is more than money. But like, why does that happen? Hmm. I mean, the simple answer is that your nervous system opened up the capacity to receive. And what I was, what I'm hearing Lois is your nervous system was in that residual fight or flight, go, go, go sympathetic. And it, I imagine it like you're just kind of zooming through life. And when you mm-hmm. actually like slow down, clear and release and open. It's like, oh, thank you, Lois. We can now flow through. <laughs> but from a nervous from a nervous system perspective, right, your energy is different. Your neurons are literally firing different. And I really want people to get like, we're more than just meat suits, right? Like we are energy, we're matter and energy. And so when you shift your nervous system dynamics, the energy of your being changes. Opportunities show up, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. it's easier. And so the what I'm hearing simple terms is you slowed down, you cleared yourself and your capacity to receive. And it doesn't, it could be money. It could be relationships. It could be time. It could be anything in the physical form opened up. And I'll tell you last year, one of my family members close to me told me I had thoughts that I don't know if I want to live anymore. Yeah. And so in that moment, the wake up call happens and in the moment it can feel challenging. I'll just share this with people quick. It can mm-hmm. feel challenging, but it's in that moment that that's an opportunity to shift. And so what I did is I made a shift from that point from this family member and our whole relationship has changed. My whole dynamic has changed. I mean, our my businesses too have grown exponentially and I'm working significantly less hours. I'm bodybuilding and I'm making changes. So Yeah. I, I, I love you. it. I yeah. love it. No, and I wanted to bring that home because that's my passion of healthy and wealthy and wise. I mean, my meaning for it is 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 that, you know, you're not here to just work. You're not mm-hmm. here to just people please. You're not here to you know, all of those things that we've been talking about today. So I'm so grateful that you were here today. Uh, guys, please sign up for our summit. Um, you'll see Dr. Melligan at manifestandmonetize.com. Go to the link to get more details. We're running out of time. Um, and again, of course, grab her releasing trauma class in the show notes. I'll also be putting it on my resources page at loiscofi.com forward slash resources. I'm assuming this will be an evergreen masterclass, right? People can yep. 
can grab it at any time. So do yourself a favor, guys. Get that. Again, hit the share button. And is there any other places people can can find you that you'd mm-hmm. like to talk about really quick before we wrap I'm it up? I'm all over social media. <laughs> YouTube, yes. LinkedIn, all those places. <laughs> I'm I'm a millennial, so you know, I'm on I'm I'm most active on Instagram. I share a lot of little mini trainings in my stories for free. I talk about my personal life. I share content on there and just ways that you can reclaim your life, essentially. That's what I'm all about. It's like I don't know. I, I believe I've been put on this planet to to be a guide in helping people reclaim their life. Mm, I love it. I love it. So again, also guys, go to suicide-prevention.now.site. You'll see uh, my guest next week is Monica Dubay. She's She does a lot of work with mindset and money blocks. And a lot of times, a lot of people who are depressed, they don't have enough money in their life, you know, all of the things. So we're going to be talking about her passion for mental health. And she's also an expert on grief. So we'll be we'll be covering a lot of powerful topics. So you can check out all of my guests this month have something powerful that can literally change a life. And hopefully, again, our goal here is to, to save a life. So as we wrap it up, I always close with the the same question for all of my guests, Dr. Mel. Um, When you hear the phrase healthy and wealthy and wise, what does that mean for you? I feel like my answer from last year, it hasn't changed much and it's expanded at the same time. And to me, it means a complete embodiment of your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your financial health. And with all of that, you know, to me, wealth exists in all forms. So when you're healthy, you can have wealth in all forms. And in in that, when you're embodied, there's deep inner wisdom that no educational system can compete with. So that's what I think of. I love it. I love it. Well, guys, again, if you saw value, please don't be shy. Hit the share button. This will be on and YouTube next week. If you're if you're also finding this wherever and whenever, um, please join us inside the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Facebook community. Dr. Mel is there. All of my guests are there. So you also have a positive, supportive, like-minded community to, as Prince would say, get through this thing called life. And not only get through it, of course, but to to grow to love and be loved and, and to serve and to be served. So thank you again, Dr. Mel, for coming back. I'm excited to see you on the summit and I uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week. Same time, same channel on Friday, September 10th. Tune in for Monica and me. And until then, here's to your best health, your best wealth and your best wisdom. Bye bye for now, guys. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this Please subscribe, refer a friend, and please drop me a rating or a review. If you do that, I'll reward you with a free 20-minute free coaching session on crafting your journey to your best self. Reach out to me at Lois at LoisKofi.com to claim your 20-minute slot. Until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.